good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship. It's good to have you all with us today. At the start of worship today, we want to share a word of thanks on behalf of the church leadership here for your response to our stewardship drive. Uh, Fan forward Sunday this past week. As of today, we raised one hundred thirty-nine seven seventy-eight dollars toward the goal of two hundred six thousand in pledges. So we're getting there. We're climbing the chart a little, little higher every week, and we've reached fifty percent of our one hundred fifty family response to that goal. So each gift that we share collectively makes a big difference in St. Answers paying it forward here in the next year with our mission and ministry. The adult class in search of the origins of Christianity will be meeting again next week. And then you might have noticed at the entryway we have the globe offering. This month we're receiving offerings for the Good Samaritan Fund. The Good Samaritan Fund helps people that are in need locally. It's very much a local uh, way of serving our community here at Cannon Falls. We share this with all the churches in town and the other organizations who participate in that Good Samaritan Fund. So if you'd like to donate to that, know that it's going to people that are in need in this community. My wife Jan and I will be providing special music today. Your week's offering may be placed in the offering place at the door. We are celebrating communion today. So remember that as we come forward, we're going to serve one section at a time. We're going to start over here, come to the center aisle, go to this group, come to the center aisle. I'm going to come over to this group, go to the center aisle, over to this group, go to the center aisle. I always come to the center aisle, receive down the side aisle, back to your pews. Remember to sanitize on the way up at the stations that are provided there and come up one at a time for communion and we step forward with social distancing six feet apart. Now I just want to say a little bit about the COVID pandemic. So we're hearing on the news that Minnesota and Wisconsin we have, a, have a high uh, occurrence of that. I received three calls in the last 24 hours from our members who have friends, relatives that have been exposed to COVID. So I simply ask you to be vigilant Remember your face masks, remember sanitizing and the social distance that they're trying to have us keep so that we can get this COVID laid down. Now for the theme proclamation, we'll go to our next slide. So today we reflect on the call to take risks for the faith. <clears throat> Throughout history, there have been followers of Jesus Christ who have lost their lives or stood up for the faith <clears throat> and been imprisoned or beaten or flogged because of their faith. Listen to the words of scripture today. Listen to our song and our prayers. God's word. The call to be a joyous opportunity to take a risk with God. To make a difference and be the soul that God created to be. As we take a step forward, we step up with courage to take those steps of faith. Now we're going to honor our veterans this morning. Bob's going to bring the flag forward. So please stand for the presentation of the flag and the singing of a beautiful for spacious skies. Thank you.
We continue with our litany for the day in service to God. We are not alone. We live in our Creator's world, our Creator who has created and is creating, who moved among us as Jesus Christ, and who works in us and through us as Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to see justice and increase evil, to live by the teachings and life of Jesus, and infuse the world with peace. We are not alone. In the darkness before dawn, in the waiting and uncertainty, where fear and, fear and courage join hands, conflict and carrying link arms, and the sun rises over prisons fashioned by the human mind, innovation, and hate. The Spirit moves among us. We trust our God, who sits down in our darkness to share our humanity, who takes us beyond safe places into action and vulnerability and into the Spirit's streets, and who challenges us to work for change, to bear responsibility, to take risks, to stand with those on the margins, and to be used by the Spirit to build a community of hope. We are not alone. Our God has gifted us with courage, faith, and cheerfulness, with sound and study, song and silence, eyes to see reality and dreams to envision what can be, that hidden things may be revealed and new ways found to touch the hearts of all we encounter. We trust in God, and every wall should crumble, and every church decay. We are the Spirit's habitation. Nearer are you, O God, than the reading closer Look through our eyes with compassion on the world and direct us outside the sacred space in time to the crossroads of relationships with the diversity and peace within reconciliation. O oh God, set your blessing on us in this time together. O oh, Spirit, pour blessings upon your children with the fire and we don't have a choir with us, but let me tell you as I listen to you say those words of the and we were a speaking choir today. Thank you. Yeah. Let's sing together, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind. He lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
lullaby in a mother's tears in the dead of night. Better than a hallelujah sometimes. God loves the drunkard's cry, the soldier's plea not to let him die.
When they had brought them, they had them stand before the council. The high priest questioned them, saying, We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name, yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you are determined to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than any human authority. When they heard this, they were enraged and wanted to kill him. But a Pharisee in the council named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, respected by all the people, stood up and ordered the men to be put outside for a short time. Then he said to them, Fellow Israelites, consider carefully what you propose to do to these men. So in the present case, I tell you, keep away from these men and let them alone, because if this plan or this undertaking is of human origin, it will fail. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. In that case, you may even be found fighting against God. They were convinced by him. When they had called in the apostles, they had them flogged. Then they ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. As they left the council, they rejected that they were considered worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of the name. And every day in the temple and at home, they did not cease to teach and proclaim Jesus as the Messiah. The second reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, the 10th chapter, verses 16 through 22. Jesus said, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues. And you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me, as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say. For what you are to say will be given to you at that time. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child. And children will, be, will rise against parents and leave them put to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. Here in the readings. Thanks be to God. Thanks, Maxine. Those are hard readings for us as Christians, but we think about what risk is God asking us to take in faith? So some questions to consider. What risk have you taken for God? And what has God called you? And what are some of the greatest adventures that you have had with faith. We'd love to hear your stories. Now we're going to spend a little time with the children online today. And we'll have a little bit of fun if we can do that. So maybe talk to your parents and the audience on, on a live feed and the congregation today, uh, the congregation that's gathered here about, uh, about taking risks and what it's like uh, when we tell the story of Christ and what effect that might have. So we're going to have a little fun. I'm going to start with this demonstration here. Have you ever played with dominoes before? <laughs> I've got a whole box of dominoes here. And one of the fun things to do is to play the game and you try to match up the numbers and the colors on the domino. And if you have a match, you can keep going and keep playing the game. And then when, if you run out of tiles first, you win the game, right? <clears throat> well, there's something else you can do with dominoes. You can kind of stack them up and create a chain reaction. So I've got some stacked up here. It's an experiment. You can see what happens. Whoa! <laughs> that was a good chain reaction, right? You can play with, with cards, with uh, different things to stack up in your house and try a chain reaction. But the point here is that Sharing the story of Jesus is like a chain reaction. That's what we're talking about today, is taking that step forward to share the story of Jesus. And we know from the scriptures that we read this morning, a lot of people were crucified, put to jail, beaten. Over the years, not just in the time of Christ, but even in our day, still beaten and jailed because of their faith in Jesus Christ. But here's the thing, once you tell the story of Jesus, it continues to spread. It's like a chain reaction story of God's love shown to us in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And here's something else that you can do that's kind of fun. You can find pieces of Play-Doh and you can actually pray with your Play-Doh. So if you're worshiping with us this morning, 
go dig in your cupboards, find the Play-Doh, and we can have a little fun with that. So I'm going to start with uh, this blue color. And each of these colors will represent something for us this morning. So first of all, you can take your Play-Doh, or get it out of here, and you can roll it into a ball. And that will remind us, see the ball there? That will remind us that we can pray for the world. We can pray for others that are in our own neighborhoods, just down the block or across the state. Maybe grandma and grandpa live in a different state. You can pray for people of our country. You can pray for Canada, Mexico. Pray for people all across the globe, the entire world. So that's our first piece of Play-Doh. The second one, you can actually form your Play-Doh. I've got some yellow Play-Doh here. You can form it into a cross. And as you form that cross, then you can thank God in your prayers today for Jesus dying on the cross for us and rising in three days, that we might have a way of salvation. Now the next thing we can do is we could maybe take our Play-Doh out of the jar and we could form it into a heart. Let's see how I do here. So you got a big chunk of Play-Doh, you can kind of form it into a heart. And when you see a heart, now I didn't have any red Play-Doh, that's usually what we think of with Valentine's Day. That's a little ways off yet, but we can think about that love that we share as a family. You can shape it into a heart. And as you make that heart-shaped Play-Doh piece, be reminded of that heart that we have for our family members. The love of mom and dad, the love that you have for your brother and sister, the love we have for each other. And, and the love that God puts deep in our hearts so that we can share love and compassion and pity. Uh, we can be merciful and serve one another and that the love that God first gave us. Now the last one, see if I can get this on this tray here. The last one is to take the Play-Doh and make an initial with your name, the first letter of your name. And you think it's okay to pray for yourself? Pray for your needs. So here's my initial R, Pastor Randy. So form your initial, and as you're doing that, maybe with your family or when you get all done playing with Play-Doh, you can just pause and have a little prayer about your needs, things you're concerned about, things you're happy about, and you can offer that to God in prayer. So let's close our time together with a prayer together. I'll say the words and repeat them. Dear God, Dear thanks for Play-Doh. Thanks and dominoes. and dominoes. Thank you for the faith. Thank you for the faith. For the heart of love. For the heart of love. And for all the ways you encourage us. And for all the ways you encourage us. To be your children. To be your children. And share your joyous word. And to share your joyous word. Amen. Amen. I'm going to put this play-doh away, but we're going to sing some songs now. These are a couple of songs that remind me of the disciples. They cast their nets in Galilee as their first song. Thank you. 
Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. I grew up in a family of risk management, you could say. My father was an insurance business and an independent agent for insurance. Every day he'd be out selling insurance. He was good at it. He had lots of clients. In some way, you could say, in some ways you could say he was really good with people. At the crack of dawn every morning, he would be out the door and at 6.30 down there at the cafe to drink coffee to be with people. He headed up the service club for a time and he served on the church council, the church I grew up in. And one of the banner movements of that church, a risk management movie, you might say, it was when my father rallied support to put a stoplight on that busy intersection where you turn off to go to the church. It was a powerful moment. One of the boys in my confirmation class's brothers had sped through the intersection at 90 plus miles an hour, and he died. He died on the scene, not far from the intersection, and I suppose that's part of why that move to put a stoplight there came to be. I remember driving by the scene of the crash, and his car was like a pancake smashed up against a telephone pole. He was a young boy. My dad was into risk management. I learned that term when I was in business school and college, and it wasn't insurance class, but risk management class. Later on, I went into risk management myself. Well, I was selling the claims, the risk that happened to people's property anyway, like car collisions and house fires, burglaries, countless roofs, even full tornado losses where everything was wiped off the map, <clears throat> and work comp claims for thumbs. The house I grew up in the risk management house was not a happy house as I look back on that. People would be calling all hours of the day and the night. They had complaints about their loss. Was insurance going to cover it? Coverages that were just too high and too high of a deductible. And how come they were let go when they didn't pay their premiums? High stress, believe me, in that home, high risk. So I went into another kind of risk management, as they say, where my dad sold insurance. I went into the pastoral business and ministry of eternal insurance. When we hear of the call to discipleship at Matthew 10, it hardly seems like a job that you and I would want. The risks that the early apostles had to take were high risks. Their lives were at stake. They were beaten, flogged, spit upon, made fun of, thrown into prison, and some of them even lost their lives because of the cross and bearing the gospel of Christ. I've never had to endure this kind of trial, this treatment just because of my faith let alone live through a physical beating or torment or be thrown into jail just because of my Christian faith in Jesus Christ. It requires some huge risk management, I'd say. Oh, I've taken a few risks, like tackling canoe trips and going on mission trips with youth groups to the inner city. I've stood next to toothless, shabby-looking, dirty, rugged, poor, serving them food. Food to the hungry, not really sure where the hands that they were touching that food with had been in the previous days, or when the last time was that they had a shower, or even the ability to wash their hands. I pushed through, stay out of quarantined block doors at the hospital, because of the potential of hazardous, contagious infections to pray for people. But all this pales, all this pales in comparison 
to what those first disciples and risk takers had to go through just because of their faith. Who were some of those martyrs? Stephen from the book of Acts is one of them. He was speaking the truth of Jesus Christ. However, his words offended listeners. So they ran Stephen out of the city, but they went further than that. They stoned him. And yet Stephen patiently accepted the persecution that was given to him. And Stephen, in his last moments, asked the Lord not to hold them guilty. Andrew was one of the first disciples of Christ, brother of that boisterous disciple Peter, who was always speaking out for Christ. Tradition says Andrew was crucified on an X-shaped cross on the north coast of Peloponnese. Sound like people you know? Well, here's someone you probably have never heard of before, Polycarp. He was responsible for putting together the entire New Testament as we have it, pulling all of these Gospels and letters of Paul and Peter and John together into, into that New Testament of our Bible. Because of his refusal to burn incense to the Roman Emperor, he was sentenced to burn at the stake. It didn't happen. He didn't burn. But tradition says he had to be done in by another way. Dietrich Bonhoeffer heard of him before. He was a Lutheran pastor theologian during the time of the World War. He went beyond protecting his own Christians as a Lutheran pastor in Germany. Bonhoeffer staunchly opposed Adolf Hitler's treatment of the Jews. As a Christian pastor, he couldn't sit by idly and watch the atrocities of so many people, men and women and children, losing their lives. He lost his life as well. Martyrs all. But let's bring this up to date now. It seems like it's way back in history, right? In time and well, we might say we can't really relate to this. Is it happening today? Let's take a look. On the night of January 7, 2010, that's a little less than, well, a little more than 10 years ago, a group of eight Egyptian Christians were killed as they left church just after celebrating Christmas Day services. No one really knows why, but it may have had something to do with retaliation for an earlier incident involving a young girl and a Christian man. The retaliation, retaliation was targeted at Christians simply because of their religion. Are there still martyrs today? In the Sudan, in the six years between, in six years, more than 1.3 million Christians lost their lives because of the faith. Sudan at the time was characterized by a total absence of civil liberties. Individual Christians, including pastors, have been assassinated in Sudan, imprisoned, tortured, and flogged to death. All because of the faith. Now in America, we can easily forget this danger in which our brothers and sisters of the faith live. It's surmised that just this century, in excess of 26 million people have died because of the faith. From AD 33 to about the year 1900, that's 1900 years, only 14 million lost their lives. The current rate is 159,000 martyrs a year, stepping forward, taking the risk of faith, but losing their lives. In Uganda, from 1971 to 1979, 300,000 believers lost their lives. In China, Christians who have to go underground are often under attack because of their faith. They have to find ways to meet in secret. During the last 30 years, in the southern Mexico state of Chihuahua, 
Many people have followed the way of Christ only to be driven from their homes. The periodical Christianity Today described their situation this way. The persecution of Christians didn't end in the time of Rome. The Roman Empire is still alive. The typical Christian today lives in a developing country, speaks a non-European language, and exists under the constant threat of persecution. Now maybe you're saying to yourself today, God, I've, I've never been through this. I've never really taken any risks for the faith. God, are you calling me to take a risk today? God, I'd, I'd like to take a risk. I'd like to take some risk for faith. Maybe, maybe you're saying to yourself, God, I could use a little help here in understanding and what I need to do. We're not here today to just leave it there with martyrs who have lost their lives. The call of the gospel is that we all need to step forward and take risks for the faith. Life is full of risks, and missing the opportunity to take some, probably even most of them, could lead to much regret in your life. So what kind of risks are you facing today? A new job opportunity? Maybe a relationship that could possibly turn into a long-term marriage relationship? Or maybe it's pondering your mind, taking that leap and going to another part of our country to attend an excellent education institution. A leap of faith, to say the least. Maybe it's a medical risk, a family risk, a business risk, a life decision. Ask yourself today, if you die today, what dreams, what talents, and what knowledge would die with you? It's our natural tendency to avoid risk and to play it safe only taking chances when we're solidly sure of things. But what's holding you back? That's the call of the gospel today. Failure is probably the biggest reason why we don't step forward in faith to take risks. Now, understandably, we fear because risk would not be risk if there weren't the risk of failure, right? But there's also a reasonable possibility of success when we step forward in faith. Without risk, you also miss out on the opportunity to grow. Now, you know your human frame. We're fitted with bones and blood vessels and nerves and muscles and ligaments. In order to grow those muscles, to be strong in life, you have to exercise, to stress out those muscles so that they can be strong and, and grow and heal and make gains. With God, he also pits us with faith muscles. Without challenging yourself and stepping out of the comfort zone and taking a risk, you limit the amount of growth in your life. Now some of the most influential people in our lives did not become great by avoiding risk. Think about that. Let's consider some of these statements about risk. See if you resonate with them. I know I've heard a few of these. You'll never know unless you try. Heard that before? When we stop taking risks, we stop living life. Eleanor Roosevelt was said, once said, do one thing every day that scares you. <laughs> Jimmy Carter said, go out on the limb, that's where the fruit is. Everything in this life is a risk. You're given only two options. Take the risk and expect results, or don't take the risk and expect nothing. How about this one? Here's a good one. Better an oops than a what if. No risk, no reward. Progress always involves risk. You can't steal second base and keep your foot on first. And sometimes you just have to have faith and take a chance. Even when your heart is shaking, have faith in the blessings that God has planned for you. Are you convinced yet you're ready to take a risk for faith? Did you know you are being fit for risk management? When we don't take risks, we miss out on what God is doing in our life. We actually miss out on seeing God at work. In conclusion, 
What does God teach us about risk? How do we respond to risk? What is God asking you to risk today? With God, risk really means risk. It can, can't cost us all we have. But when we take risk with God, we gain all that God has. Risk demands trust, too. In fact, risk is another word for trust. A trust for, that calls for us to give up our control and to let God have control of the wheel. It's also risky to turn down God's risk. And we never take risk for God without taking risk with God and through God. God doesn't put us out there by ourselves. Even when it may feel that way, God is always with us. And God is always working through us when we act for God. We're not alone. So then if, if God calls you to do something, do it. God knows best. If God has asked you to do something, then God is going to be right there beside you. Supporting you, lifting you up every step of the way. And always remember... It is God who accomplishes God's work through us, not human beings. Remember these words from Chronicles? Be strong and be courageous. Do not fear. A key word for us as Christians is faith. The book of Hebrews, if you've taken a look, is full of all kinds of stories of faith. By faith, Noah was called by God to build an ark, and he did it. By faith, Abraham was called to a faraway country. He didn't even know it existed, but he went. He followed God's lead. God brought the people to the promised land. Reflect on your faith of the first disciples. Reflect on the faith of the martyrs of faith. Faith is risking what is for what is yet to be. Faith is taking even small steps, however small they are, knowing that each of those small steps will lead to much bigger steps in your life. Faith is where we land today with risk. Faith cannot and will not exist without a little bit of risk. Proverbs said it this way, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And do not lean on your own understanding. Lean on God. Lean on faith. Risks are inevitable. It is through risk-taking that we exercise the muscles of our faith in God. If for anything, if for anything today as we come to the conclusion now, let's remember how God himself, Jesus took on our frame and laid his arms on the cross as a leap of faith with us, that we might have a way with God. Amen. Let's turn now to our prayers for the day. Heavenly Father, we're sometimes foolish, not wise, scatterbrained, not prudent, reactive, not responsive. Forgive our less commendable words and deeds. Remind us of the wonderful honor and high privilege of being called to your son's wedding banquet. Give us the grace and wisdom of your Holy Spirit. Let us always rejoice and believe and show the light of faith, hope, and love. We pray this day that you'll make San Angars to be wise, faithful, and watchful. That you'll make our worship joyful and pleasing in your sight. That you'll make our labors glorify you and help those in distress in our neighborhoods and community that you will make of our feast and celebration a foretaste of the feast to come, feeding all with truth and righteousness and salvation, and make us to be your people of risk stepping forward in faith. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray, God, that you'll give patience and kindness and comfort to the, and hope to your persecuted church. Help us to not forget them, to provide for their needs and bear witness to their suffering. Turn in the hearts of their enemies to seek your will and forgiveness. Make each of us into the land shining with your light. Do not let us grow weary in serving others and praising you. 
filled us to overflowing with your spirit, so that we may constantly share your grace and favor with those whose lights are mere flickers of a flame. Lord, in your mercy. And we pray, God, this day that you would let your justice roll down like waters. Let your righteousness fill the hearts and minds of all who are entrusted with authority. Especially we pray in this hour for elected and appointed leaders from this past week. Give them your spirit of wisdom and understanding, counsel, and might, so that they can work towards unity, peace, prosperity, justice, and healing. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. On this Veterans Day weekend, we pray for all who have honorably served this country. Grant wisdom and courage, integrity, and sound judgment to everyone currently serving in the military. And to all who risk their lives on behalf of our communities and our country. Use their skills to bring freedom, safety, and justice wherever they serve. Keep them safe. Shield their loved ones from grief and fear. And grant them a swift and joyful homecoming. Lord, in your mercy. Let all who seek your help in these times of trial to find deliverance from all that may trouble them. We remember before you today Dennis Ludwitsky, Bob Kane, Doris Helgram, Patsy Davison, Erica Pagel, Mackenzie Franklin, Barb Gerdall, Jerry Erickson, Kathy Henson's daughter Joanne, and other nurses and medical professional staff and healthcare workers. Karen Jensen, Benji Otto, Carol Sinekin, Brad Hall, Richard and Jan Gerke, Sharon Doctor, Ione Tomasetti, Andy Stein, Muriel Chalinka, Andrea Deacon Jones, Melvin Johnson, and Deb Pierce. And even the birds today. <laughs> with all these people, and with your creation, grant health and salvation, comfort, hope, and guidance. Rekindle with them grace and comfort, and give a double portion of the same spirit to all who minister to their needs. Protect us, O Lord God, in the time of COVID. Relieve the stress, heal those who are with the illness now, and remind us always to be vigilant. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And finally, Heavenly Father, as we remembered on All Saints Day last Sunday, we grieve for our dead, but not without hope. Thank you for receiving all of these loved ones into your merciful care. Renew our confidence in faith. Encourage us to help one another along the way. Lead us by your cross into the kingdom you have prepared. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Hear our prayers and grant all that glorifies you and benefits your world for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. We're going to share the creed of the church now at this time. <clears throat> I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to them to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last day. Amen. It was on the night in which we betrayed that our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, broke it, and gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and gave for all to drink, saying, this cost me a new covenant in my blood, given and shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. This do in remembrance of me. Let's pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. It's not need to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Again, as we celebrate communion today, we ask that you come forward and simply sanitize your hands. We will sanitize as servers. We'll put our gloves on, our face masks on. 
and uh, step forward one at a time from those red markings to the station. We'll switch gears as we go through each of these sections. Again, step to the center aisle each time. Receive down the side aisles. Come for all is now ready. And we'll sing together. Stand up, stand up for Jesus.
Now the body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood strengthen you and preserve you in God's grace. Amen. A couple of notes as you go home today, maybe be thinking about wrestling with, ah, God, what are you calling me to do? What risk do I take for faith? Uh, consider all those martyrs that have died for faith and maybe go out a little more bold mm -hmm. to take those steps that God is calling you to. Next Sunday, will be a story from 2 Samuel 23. You can read ahead as the story of David's mighty army. Now the blessing of Almighty God, the Father of glory, Jesus Christ, our peace, the spirit of truth be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let's sing, lift high the cross. Refrain, verse, refrain. Yeah.